So I'd really rather not have any more questions about, is it okay to lose this game? It's never okay to lose a game. Welcome to College Football Cuts. It is the greatest time of year. It is that time when college football returns to us for the 2017 football season. It's also back to school. You gotta love that as well. So those two things combined make this year, this time of year, the, just fantastic for everyone. My name is Mark. I am uh, here coming at you from the great white north. I am from Canada. I am uh, one of the biggest college football fans around because you know what? There's just not a lot of college football fans up here and that's, uh, that's their fault. Uh, (laughs) they're getting ready for their hockey season and hockey's great. I like it, but I love college football, the culture, the traditions. I love it all. I got to experience college football firsthand in 2006 on a road trip. I took to uh, Columbus, Ohio. So yeah, you can guess who my team is and you know what? That is really expanded into just uh, an appreciation for the Big Ten. I, uh, I like watching a lot of Big Ten football, and that expanded into just nationwide. I have jumped right in, and uh, I listen to college football radio probably more hours a day than uh, is healthy, but uh, I, um, I love everything about college football. I love the, the rules of the game. I love the traditions, the culture, Howard's Rock, the rivalries, Bedlam, um, will Texas be good and back this year? Everything's better when Texas is good, right? That's that's the way they should be. They're a powerhouse. They should be good, but they haven't been. So why is that? So that you know, all of that intrigue, the ongoing drama, I I love it all. And uh, this podcast is really for uh, people that are broadly focused that if you're if you like Bama and, and it's roll tide and everyone else and that's the only thing you can think of that this isn't for you this is a national national podcast every team will get uh represented here I you know the I, I'm not I'm not just saying this because I'm an Ohio State fan but of course the greatest game we love to watch is the Appalachian State Michigan game and that big upset from 2007 uh <laughs> those types of games and, and you know look at Appalachian State now they're, they're they're top of their division all the time they're constantly threatening to up uh, up end big players it's going to happen every year someone's going to walk in like every year when somebody thinks you know what we're going to schedule real smart this year let's get North Dakota State let's get them involved with the game so we can be our cupcake game luckily for the whole division one this year they don't play North Dakota State but there's going to be another upset. You know there's going to be another upset with the FCS teams. It happens every year. And those shenanigans and those games that happen where those upsets that keep us watching every single week, uh, just keeping us on the edge of our seats, that's what we have coming up in the next, probably the next three to four weeks for sure because those are most of the non-conference stuff. And those are those really set the table for the, your team for the year. And, uh, you know, we made it through, you know, made it through Spurrier calls it talking season. But before that, there's holding your breath season, which is you don't want to open the paper and see, oh, this guy was uh, this five star recruit was caught. He stole a car and this guy got in a fight in a bar and this guy got a possession charge. You know, that that time of year, that June to July, where everyone's just holding their breath and (laughs) hoping that no player got hurt. No player got arrested, and they made it to fall camp on time. That's uh, that's what uh, that's where we're at now. Camp is coming to an end, and it's definitely time to play some football. So let's dive right in with some of the top games of the week. This week we got Alabama and Florida State, Michigan going down in the swamp in Florida, Ohio State's going to play in Indiana, Maryland's going to Texas, and Tulsa is going to Oklahoma State the opening round first game up Alabama at Florida State that should be a amazing opening game one versus three here's what's going to happen the people are going to talk about Florida State's returning quarterback Francois the strength of their starters and how they can handle the pressure Jimbo Fisher is going to get compared to Nick Saban as one of the greatest coaches and he used to work for him 
the cliche about how close Alabama came to the national title last year is going to be repeated over and over. And as the game gets closer, they're going to talk about it's okay to lose this game. It'll be a mulligan. Do you remember the one time the reporter asked Nick Saban if it was okay to lose a game? So I'd really rather not have any more questions about, is it okay to lose this game? It's never okay to lose a game. We'll get off the fence, Nick. I don't know if anybody should be confused if Nick Saban thinks it's okay if you can lose one game. It's not. Alabama is opening up with another history of a strong game. They're beating Clemson in 08. They're beating Virginia Tech in 09. San Jose State, Kansas State, some mulligans there. Remember the Michigan game, 41-12 to they beat them. Virginia Tech, 31-10, not a ranking, but that's a Frank Beamer team. West Virginia in 14, 15, they beat Wisconsin. And you remember last year they dominated number 20 USC, 52-6? to I think, uh, well, and Florida State too. Florida State, you know, they beat number 11 um, Ole Miss, 45-34. In 14, they beat Oklahoma State. Good program, a respectable pit in 13, 41-13. A couple of cupcakes, but this is not a mulligan. I think Bama's going to win. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair, except it's not going to be a repeat of USC. It's going to be a 38-21 type win, you know, 45-21. Bama's defense is going to push Francois right to the brink all night in that uh, the whole o- offensive line. Um, I think it's going to be they're going to wear him down, and it's not a mulligan for whoever loses. Florida versus Michigan in the swamp. So is this the did we find an offense or uh, versus do we lose too much to the NFL type of a uh, game? However, I, I mean, you got to respect your enemy. This is from an Ohio State Buckeye fan. I think you're foolish if you don't. Michigan is going to go into Florida and they're going to win. Unless the offense for Florida has a dramatic improvement and I don't see if they have, maybe some quarterback play, you got to believe that the mini Harbaugh's are going to go in there and win. Michigan's a little under the radar with the success of other programs in the Big Ten, so 24-20 Michigan wins. How about some quick picks? I did this one last week. I picked the UFC, uh, USC uh, South Florida game. Quinton Flowers, if he comes out and performs like he can, they're going to win big, 45-10. They did win, but wasn't that a horrible first quarter? They really stunk that up. How about we go with some Kiffin now? Does Kiffin really look like David Putty uh, in that video, the awkward one where he's staring at the sun? What if they can win this one? I don't know. Well, I do know. They're not going to win. What's going to happen is Navy is going to come out and beat them 28-17. to Good showing for FAU. I think they're going to be a story for the year, but just not yet. Temple at Notre Dame. This is, uh, did Brian Kelly pull a it's not you, it's me routine? Remember the Costanza? Well, check this out. It's not you, it's me. You're giving me the it's not you, it's me routine? I invented it's not you, it's me. Nobody tells me it's them, not me. If it's anybody, it's me. All right. George, it's you. You're damn right it's me. (laughs) That's right. I I hope the whole Notre Dame team is saying, no, no, coach, not you. It was us. We really stunk it up last year. Although they lost by, you know, slim margins. But you better win this weekend, Notre Dame, or that confession line is going to be real long. The acronym game, BYU at LSU. Watch out, BYU. Portland State just about took you down last week. It came right down to the fourth quarter. New coach, new mascot. Let's go. LSU wins that one. Appalachian State, Georgia. My favorite, my my favorite Appalachian guys there. They are going to be keeping Georgia on their toes. They almost took out Tennessee last year in overtime. They could have. Tighten up the lines. Those running backs of uh, Chubb and Michelle are going to be real strong. Next game, Ohio State. My Buckeyes traveling to Indiana. If only there was a time in college football where a coach was fired from a school harshly, then they got to face their number one, their uh, former team in week one. Oh, more Kiffin, of course. The guy that created the phrase, the guy was Kiffin, you know, being unceremoniously Fired from your job on the tarmac at the airport at four in the morning. Yeah. So the only question is Kevin Wilson going to go, Kevin Wilson going to go full Kiffin on Indiana. When you compare them, uh, Wilson got fired in controversy because of treatment of players and uh, gets a shot at playing his former team in week one. Kiffin was fired at 4 a.m. on the tarmac. Okay. It was a private room, but we like the tarmac story. Classy, by the way, USC. 
doms his former team by 46 points coming back. So here's what's going to happen. Indiana could score first. They could shock the world, and they could be ahead in the first quarter. Ohio State will, you know, they'll get one back, and, you know, by the end of the half, they'll probably be up by maybe seven. And then... Do you know what nemesis means? A righteous infliction of retribution manifested by an appropriate agent. Like our friend, Mr. Kiffin. Wilson is going to let it go, and there's probably going to be a turnover because the defensive line for Ohio State is the best in the country. They're going to get a, cause a score in addition to maybe another score they got at the start of the third quarter. The bright side, there's going to be some amazing pictures of some Indiana fans in those red and white overalls, you know, that had maybe too much draft beer and a lopsided second half. And you know, how you doing over there, Indiana? Not too good. <laughs> Final score, Ohio State 45, Indiana 21. Next up, Texas and Maryland. In Texas, um, heavy hearts in Texas this week, but uh, the bull versus the big turtle, like a dog crapping peach pits, this is going to get real uncomfortable fast if Texas doesn't perform. They need a statement win at home. Texas finished way behind Maryland on total defense in 16. They were a little better on total offense than Maryland. Maryland expectations, meh, not much. Texas expectations, yeah, a little higher. Both teams were horrible in penalties last year. They get that under control. Texas should have better athletes, right? We'll see. The line on the game's been stuck at 17 in favor of Texas for a long time. It's moving a little bit, but it's like saying, ah, I don't know, this one seems right, I'm not sure. Much like Notre Dame, they better win or it's going to be ugly in Austin. People love to get romantic with those historically strong teams. Not so fast, though. There's a <laughs> some corso for you. Before you sign the mortgage over to Vegas and claim that Texas is back, they did lose to Kansas last year, so watch yourself. I think Texas is going to pull ahead in the match, but uh, we'll wait and see if they're back after week three. Texas 24, Maryland 13. Tulsa gets to travel to Oklahoma. And why isn't anybody just saying that Oklahoma State is just going to blow Tulsa out? They're going to hang 70 on them, and it's, it's just going to be over. Other ranked teams are getting you know statements like that, and uh, I think it's because Tulsa was sneaky good last year. They won 10 games last year, and they almost beat number 13 Houston at the time. They're decisively mediocre in a lot of categories, but they can score with the best of them. However, they do need to retool that offense from last year. So, folks, get ready for some points. Tulsa ranked ahead of Oklahoma State last year in total offense and touchdowns scored. That's why no one's proclaiming the guarantee for the Pokes. Anyone can win the marathon, but I will be the first to say Oklahoma State is going to dominate. They are going to score in a blowout. They're going to score. I mean, Tulsa is going to score enough points to beat 70 other teams, but not in Stillwater and not on Thursday. Oklahoma 66, Tulsa 28. How about some more quick picks with uh, some point spread? Washington and Rutgers. The line was 30 and a half and it moved back to 27 and a half. Why? Why did that happen? I, I didn't see anyone that got hurt for Washington. Rutgers did not do well last year against Washington. There's no reason to believe there's that, that much improvement. I think if you can get 27 and a half, take Washington. I think they're going to just destroy Rutgers. Louisville at Purdue. Opening line was 23 and a half uh, for Louisville. You know that Heisman winner, the guy? He's like, you know, the second or third best quarterback coming back in 2016. At least that's what every article I read is, uh, you know, from June on. I think Lamar Jackson might go off for seven touchdowns in the first half. Such disrespect. The line's moving up, but if you catch it under 24, grab it because there's going to be 60 points scored. Troy at Boise. We know Boise doesn't lose often on the Smurf turf. However, I think Troy is a team on the rise, and they could cover this game. The line's gone up to 12.5, and, and now it's back to 11. I see the last quarter push by Boise to win by 7, but not 11. So there's the first round of games that uh, I just picked off this week just to you know start the conversation. But, I mean, when you look at the rest of the games, there's all sorts of intrigue all over the country. You've got, uh, you know, what's, what's North Carolina going to be like this year? They've lost Mitch Trubisky. Are they going to be any good? Um, Miami has got uh, – they're moving up the rankings. They're, are they going to pull it off this year? How about, how about a sneaky game like Youngstown State 
going to Pittsburgh. That's Bo Pelini. Remember crazy Bo Pelini? He is back. He's coaching Youngstown State. They've got a great squad. They went to the final of the FCS last year. Who knows what will happen? Portland State. Remember Portland State that took BYU? Took them right down to the wire. They ended up losing. It was a 20-6 to six or something like that. 20-7. to seven, I can't remember. They're going into Oregon State, who looked very Oregon State last week. Um, they they uh, that, that game, who knows what could happen. That could be the first upset. Um, that's the intrigue. How about South Carolina? Remember South Carolina losing to the Citadel? The Citadel. Remember that? What South Carolina's got to get themselves together. That that is um, that's a program that should be stronger. They've got history, yeah. And they pull NC State in the first game, who is everyone is loving this year. So we'll uh, we'll see how that works out. There's um, Northwestern is uh, just outside the rankings this year. They get a Nevada team. Uh, maybe I mean if no- Northwestern can just take care of business against Nevada, maybe they pull into the top twenty-five. You, you never know. Uh, Kentucky. Everyone's on the Kentucky bandwagon this year. They got to play Southern Miss. Very sneaky. They've got some uh, some great running backs. Um, so keep an eye on that game. There is intrigue all over the place. We've talked about. Uh, yep, Louisville going to Purdue. Uh, we talked. Uh, how about Arkansas State and Nebraska? Nebraska, Big Red. Are they are they going to sport a team this year that can? They can at least compete and be be relevant in the Big Ten. They should be. They're, they're such a powerhouse. And, uh, again, they're one of those teams that football is just – it's just better when they're better. And uh, that's uh, – so looking for them to, to definitely improve. Uh, we've got Monday – we've got Sunday games. Uh, Texas A&M at, at UCLA. Both those programs, hot seat coaches. Who's going to win? Don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, West Virginia, number 22 against number 21 ranked Virginia Tech. Dustin Fuente uh, in his second year. You know, it, we'll see if they've improved. And, uh, you know, West Virginia under Dana Holgerson, they, they're always fun to watch, always throwing the ball around. Um, so that'll be a great one on Sunday. Monday, Tennessee. What is Tennessee going to show this year? They were just destroyed by injuries. Um, you know, the. The coach loves the cliches, the champions of life. Uh, we'll see if they're champions of life uh, on uh, Monday. That's, uh, of course, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So lots of uh, great games, lots of intrigue. Hey, we know who the rosters are for Florida and uh, Michigan now. That's great. We were all uh, wondering about that. Um, Florida, oh, 10 suspended players now. Th- that's rough. That is going to be – that is not play well into uh, into their hand to, to win the game. So – We'll see what Harbaugh does with uh, with Michigan. You know my opinion. I think Michigan's going to go down and uh, take care of business. Um, that's all. So we will wrap this one, uh, this week's podcast up. We'll try and do some, uh, maybe some results on Sunday and just talk about what happens. So until next time, we will uh, talk to you soon. I'm here to whip you into shape. So grab your jock if you need one. <laughs> it's gold time.